A warm welcome to this, our offering of reconciliation on this, the first annual week of reconciliation. 2021 marked a turning point in our federal government's desire to continue their walk in reconciliation with our First Nations people by declaring September 30th as a National Day of Reconciliation. And so we at St. John's have decided to put together a compilation of videos and liturgy to help mark this occasion throughout this week. Reconciliation happens when we start to engage more and more with the story of our history and the story of our past. One of the most significant elements of our history with our First Nations people was the legacy of the residential school system and our church's role in that. The Indian residential school system was established by the government of Canada for the express purpose of assimilation of First Nations, Inuit, and Métis into the non-Indigenous world. Indian residential schools were funded by the federal government and administered and staffed in some cases by various Canadian Christian denominations, including the Anglican Church of Canada. The Anglican Church administered about three dozen residential schools between 1820 and 1969, operating at its peak a total of 24 concurrently. Over 150,000 children attended the Indian residential schools across the country over many generations. In many instances, children were sent to school many, many miles away. Parents were threatened with loss of their Indian status or even arrest and jailing if they refused to send their children to these schools or release them into the custody of the Indian agent or even the RCMP who came to collect them. At least 6,000 of those children never returned home from these schools. One of the objectives of our liturgy today will be to take that step in working towards reconciliation by listening to the word, by acknowledging the territory on which we stand, and by praying for reconciliation, for praying for hope, and by praying for peace. When We Were Alone by David A. Robertson and Julie Flett. Today, I helped my kokum in her flower garden. She always wears colorful clothes. It's like she dresses in rainbows. When she bent down to prune some of the flowers, I couldn't even see her because she blended in with them. She was like a chameleon. Nokum, why do you wear so many colors, I asked. Nokum said, well, no shishim. When I was your age, at home in my community, my friends and I wore di many different colours. But at the school I went to, far away from home, they gave us different clothes to wear. All the children were dressed the same, and our clothes weren't colourful at all. We all mixed together like storm clouds. Why did you have to dress like that? I asked. They didn't like that we wore such beautiful colours, Nokum said. They wanted us to look like everybody else. But sometimes, in the fall when we were alone and the leaves had turned to their warm autumn hues, we would roll around on the ground. We would pile the leaves over the clothes they had given us and we would be colourful again and this made us happy. Now, Nokum said, I always wear the most beautiful colours. After I helped with the flowers, we went over to the back gate. There were vines covering the gate and they reached all the way to the ground. When my kokum turned to fix the latch, I saw that her braid hung almost as low as the vines. It was like she had a tail. Nokum, why do you wear your hair long? I asked. Nokum said, well, no shishim. When I was your age, at home in my community, my friends and I grew our hair long, just like our people have always done. It made us feel strong and proud. But at the school I went to, far away from home, they cut off all our hair, our strands of hair mixed together on the ground like blades of dead grass. 
Why did you have to wear your hair like that? They didn't like that we were proud, Nokum said. They wanted us to be like everybody else. But sometimes in the spring when we were alone and the grass had grown so long and thick in the field, we would pick the blades from the ground and we would braid them into the short hair they had given us and this would give us long hair again and this made us happy. Now, Nokum said, I always wear my hair long. After my kokum had fixed the latch, I followed her to the birdhouse. There was a bird flying through the air like a jingle dress dancer. She fed the bird and she whispered, Napina yasis, mikiso, tamisi kitiyin, ta maskisiyin. And her words sounded like a poem. Nokum, why do you speak in Cree? I asked. Nokum said, well, no shishim. When I was your age at home in my community, my friends and I always spoke our language. But at the school we went to, far away from home, they wouldn't let us speak our words. All the children used their strange words, and we didn't understand them at all. Our voices blended together like a flock of crows. Why did you have to talk in their language? I asked. They didn't like that we spoke our language, Nokum said. They wanted us to talk like everybody else. But sometimes in the summer when we were alone and our teachers weren't anywhere around the place that where we were, we would whisper to each other in Cree. We would say all the words we weren't allowed to say and we wouldn't forget them. And this made us happy. Now, Nokum said, I always speak my language. After gardening was done, I sat with my Kukum in the backyard. Her brother came over and sat with us. He comes over all the time. We drank tea and ate bannock. The tea was hot and sweet. The bannock was moist and warm and melted in my mouth. My cuckoo and my uncle talked and laughed like children. Nokum, why do you and Nokomis always spend time together? I asked. Nokom said, well, no shishim. When we were your age, at home in our community, being with family was the most important thing. We played with each other, did chores together and shared everything. But at the school I went to, far away from home, they wouldn't let us be together. My brother and I were separated like day and night. Why were you and Nokoma separated? I asked. They didn't like it when we were with family, Nokum said, because when we were together, we thought too much of home. But sometimes in the winter when we were alone and we were sure that nobody could see us, we would find each other. We would take off our mittens and in the crisp cold air, we would hold hands so we could be with each other. And this made us happy. Now, Nokum said, as she reached over and held my uncle's hand on mine, I am always with my family. <laughs>